Christmas morning. How is that possible? How could it possibly have gotten here that fast? I mean, it seems like a month ago, we were concluding the summer on campus season at uh, Blowing Rock Methodist and, and saying, well, now we're going to be getting together online. And all of a sudden, it's Christmas, and we're a week away from a brand new year. Tempest Fugit, huh? Well, I am so, so grateful that I get to experience Christmas Day with you. Talk about a Christmas present to me and to our church. Thank you for being here. Thank you sincerely for being here, for telling others about us. And in the new year to come, make that part of your commitment, just to spread the word about Blowing Rock Methodist so that people all over the country can tune in and be a part of this community, this fellowship of faith. It is such a Christmas gift to have you and to spend time with you. Let us pray. O child born on this holy day, come to us. Come to us with peace and power. Come to us with love and forgiveness. Come to us with hope for the future. Come to be with us, we pray, and through us to be with others. In Jesus' name, amen. As we've been uh, unwrapping our Christmas gifts today, uh, I want you to know that you have been the gift to so many others in the high country because your faithfulness, what you keep contributing to this church, goes through us as a conduit. Um, to purchase medicine, to put food on the tables, to put clothes on the backs of children, to keep people warm and under a roof, uh, to give them temporary shelter, to tutor little ones, uh, and on and on we could go. Uh, what you do for adults, for children, uh, for families, thank you. Thank you. You are the Christmas gift on this day to so many of those folks. You are the vehicle through whom the newborn babe has reached them. I am so grateful. You can keep uh, supporting this ministry by going right here on our website and finding the donate icon. Uh, it'll walk you through how best to contribute, but I thank you in advance for it. Would you join with me in prayer? Heart the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinner reconciled. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. For peace on earth we pray this day. Peace for all people in all places. The brave patriots in Ukraine, the brave women in Iran, those who suffer from civil unrest and violence in Sudan and Nigeria, the homeless and hungry in Haiti, the abused children and trafficked women and addicted people and neglected and depressed folks in our own land. Wherever there is human suffering, O God, may the birth of Christ bring peace on earth and mercy mild. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. May all the nations begin to realize today that a prince of peace has come to inaugurate a new epoch of life, a time when the power of love will at last overcome the love of power. A time when people will begin to understand that grace and charity are both wiser and stronger than might and missiles. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. Veiled in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Pleased is man with us to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. May we in our daily journeys be reminded, O Holy One, that Emmanuel means God with us, and thus we are no longer alone on those journeys. In struggle or suffering, in guilt or grief, in fear or frustration, in weariness or worry, there is a shoulder to lean on, a listening ear, 
a trusted friend who walks beside us, pleased as man with us to dwell. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. We thank you, God, for the promise and peace and power born into our world on Christmas. For this gift of our newborn king, in whose name we pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let me read to you, share with you, just the first few verses of the Christmas story from Luke Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he was of the house and lineage of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Let us hear, O God, in this your word, a word for our own lives, we ask in the name of Christ. Amen. My brother-in-law and I often meet for lunch at a little place in Winston-Salem called Zoe's. Um, Small, lovely little restaurant, meat and three, kind of like Sunny Rock. Uh, The food is always good, uh, usually high calories, big chunks of cornbread that come with each meal. Uh, The waitress is there, and they kind of balk, if you call them, uh, table servers. Uh, they say, no, we're waitresses. That's always been good enough. That's who we are. But the waitresses there look at you suspiciously if you order unsweetened tea. And they call everybody honey and darling, not Darlene with a G, honey, darling. Darling, want some more sweet tea? Uh, one of the waitresses at the place, uh, usually waits on my brother-in-law and I when we go in for lunch. And she always greets us the same way. Remember, there are only two of us in the booth, just he and I, two people. Doesn't matter. She'll come over and say loud enough for everybody else in the restaurant to hear, good Lord, what a cast of characters we have here. And uh, I suspect she's right. (laughs) I also suspect that's a normal thing for us to proclaim when we read the Christmas story, Uh, not with the same smirk or smile as that uh, table server, that waitress who waits on my brother-in-law and myself, but with a sense of holy reverence and wonder and joy. Uh, What could be more appropriate than reading the Christmas story as Luke and Matthew tell it and saying, good Lord, what a cast of characters. Now, you know, of course, and we've talked about this previously, that we import some of the characters into the Christmas story who weren't really a part of it, like the wise men. We we talked about that recently. The wise men were part of the epiphany story. They showed up after the birth of Jesus by as much as two years. They didn't go to the manger. They went to the house where Mary and Joseph were living with their firstborn child. But 
what they tell us, what their story tells us is so rich and full, and somehow it, it adds depth to our understanding of Christmas. And so I think it's altogether fitting and meaningful and appropriate that we have brought them in to the Christmas story. Um, the point of the story uh, for us is something without which uh, our whole understanding of Advent and Christmas would be a bit spiritually deprived. They sought diligently for the child. That's a great phrase. They sought diligently for the child. He was not an afterthought for them, uh, not something tacked onto the season, peripheral to a season that was primarily, is primarily about Santa and shopping and parades and parties. Uh, that was part of my inspiration for writing the little Christmas book that some of you have been reading this December. It's designed so that if you begin on December 1st and you read a chapter a day, you conclude the book today on Christmas. Uh, hopefully, uh, infusing us at least to some extent with an awareness throughout the entire month of December that, bottom line, for all the other things, the trappings, the good things, the fun things, bottom line, the story is about Jesus. And we miss the real meaning of the season unless we seek diligently, as the wise men did, for that central figure. And when they found him, they departed to their own country by another way. They were forever changed because they had sought diligently for Jesus and had found him at Christmas. Uh, the other stories come to us from Luke. Um, the the who's and the how's and the mangers and the decorations that we put beside the creche and the ones who weren't even that impressive, whose figurines we don't have, nor would we put it there, like the innkeeper. That's a Luke story. The innkeeper who didn't make room for Joseph, Mary, and the child from from him, we learn a serious lesson about who we're tempted to shut out and why, and about how ungodly it is when our favorite phrase is no room. Uh, who are we tempted to shut out, and what cost do we pay for doing so? We build so many walls in our culture, deciding who's on the inside and who stands at the door and knocks, but that door is never unlocked for them. Uh, you, you, you don't look like I do. You don't think like I do. You don't vote like I do. You don't talk like I do. You don't live where I live. You don't drive where I, where I, what I drive. You, you didn't go to my school. I don't know if you went to any school. You don't wear the sort of stuff I wear. I don't understand you. You make me uncomfortable. So we join voices with the innkeeper. No room. Do you remember an old poem called uh, The Shoemaker's Dream? Also here at The Cobbler's Dream about a man named Conrad who was a shoemaker. And uh, he had a dream that Jesus was coming to his shop that next day, and he got prepared. He decorated. He fixed a meal. He made a pair of shoes just for Jesus. He waited and waited and waited that day. Every time anybody coming to the door thinking this is the moment, but it was always somebody else. And at the end of the day, Jesus hasn't come. And Conrad prays, how is it, Lord, that your feet delay? Have you forgotten that this was the day then soft in the silence a voice he heard, lift up your heart, for I kept my word. Three times I came to your open door, three times my shadow was on your floor. 
For I was the beggar with tired feet. I was the hungry you gave to eat. I was that child on a homeless street. In Jesus' parable of the judgment, um, the goats, the ones left out, say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or tired or a stranger or, or without clothes or in prison? And we failed to meet your needs. And Jesus said, whenever you turned away, any of these who were the least, my brothers, my sisters, in that moment, what you did to them, you did to me. It's a powerful, a powerful lesson that comes to us from the innkeeper. Even though there are no figurines to commemorate him, he's not in our crash, not in our manger scenes, but a powerful lesson nonetheless, reminding us be very, very careful when you close the doors and lock them, when you build the walls, when you shut people out from your heart and your life and your relationship, who knows in those moments, but what we might just be shutting out the newborn king. Then there's Mary, Joseph, the shepherds also from Luke's rendering the story. They teach us about worship about coming into his presence with praise, about knowing that that when we open ourselves up to Jesus, when we open ourselves up to him and his birth, we open ourselves up to divine mystery and divine mercy. Let us go into Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has made known to us, said the shepherds. Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart, said Luke. Neither fully understood what had happened. It was a divine mystery. But each knew that down deep inside their lives, something grand had occurred, something more important and meaningful than anything else that had ever happened or ever would. It was divine mercy. If there's if there's anything this day should teach us, it is that, that when Jesus enters our lives, our homes, our relationships, our economics, our priorities, our worldviews, everything changes. We change. Life changes. Life changes with this birth. And though we can't fully understand or explain the dynamics of it all, we do in time figure out that everything is better and brighter and more beautiful because of the birth in Bethlehem. Divine mystery, divine mercy. We learn that from Joseph, Mary, and the shepherds. And then then there are the angels, also from Luke singing over the Bethlehem hillside and telling the shepherds, unto you, unto you shepherds is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Go to a manger, and there you will find him, you shepherds of all people. From from them we learn that the arrival of Christ transforms us from it's all about me to it's all about all. In the Bible, the word angel simply means God's messenger. So, whenever you or I speak or show or share God's love to somebody else, in that moment, we are literally being angelic. In this story, the angels told shepherds how to find Jesus. They could have told King Herod. They could have told Pharisees, they could have told chief priests, they could have told members of the Sanhedrin, they could have told the high, the mighty, the very religious, but instead they went to lowly, left out, left behind, disrespected shepherds, distrusted shepherds. The angels were not choosy with whom they shared the good news of great joy. And in so doing, they reminded us that sharing the love of God with people is never selective or segregated. We share that love with all. In the words we speak or refuse to speak, uh, more importantly, in, in how we live and act and treat people, 
whoever crosses our path should go away feeling a little bit of that mystery that unto them has come this day a Savior, and to at least a certain extent they met him when they met us and experienced his kindness and care through us. Good Lord, what a cast of characters. And for each of them, and each of you, I am thankful. Because all of you gathered at this moment at a holy cradle, teach me something about the sacred meaning of this holy day. I experience the newborn king to a certain extent and often to a great extent through you. Paige joins me this morning in saying to you from the bottom of our hearts, Merry Christmas. Thank you.